Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I've recently become interested in analog integrated circuit design. Commercial tools like Cadence go in the category of, if you have to ask the price, you can't afford it. But there are now open source tool chains for things like Skywater's 130 nanometer process. You can enter your schematic using XGIM, do the layout in Magic, and simulate your design using ng-spice. And there are also field programmable analog arrays on the horizon. But I would really like to experiment with these kinds of designs on the breadboard. And for that, I want well-matched transistors. Now, if we want matched BJTs, we can get some matched quad chips from that corporation. By the way, if you're naming your company, don't name it something like that. Make sure your name is uniquely Googleable. But most of the action nowadays seems to be with CMOS processes, so I need to look for matched MOSFETs. And the only company I know of that makes these currently is Advanced Linear Devices. If you know about others that should be on my radar screen, please leave a comment below. They make dual and quad MOSFET chips for both in-channel and p-channel, although their p-channel collection isn't as extensive as their in-channel collection. They also make chips that have dual in-channels and dual p-channels in the same package. And if you really want, they make a chip with just a single complementary pair. Something that's particularly useful for our goal of emulating the kinds of MOSFETs we get on integrated circuits is that the bulk connection of the MOSFETs is brought out to a pin. So the bulk isn't internally strapped to the source the way you usually find in a discrete MOSFET. This relates to issues I talked about in my last video about MOSFETs with this admittedly clickbaity title. But that video has done amazingly well, so I guess curiosity-based clickbait works. I could have called the video something like, the body effect threshold voltage correction is a hack, here's a better way to think about MOSFETs, but I don't think that would have gotten as many clicks. Now suppose you have a design with four NFETs and four PFETs. Would you want to buy a couple of these kind of devices, or a couple of the quad devices where you would buy a quad in channel and a quad P channel. Well, that depends on what you want to track. Remember that the various MOSFETs in the same chip are going to be thermally coupled. So however their characteristics change, they'll change together. For most of their devices, they'll list a typical threshold voltage of 0.7 volts but they'll also give a range of somewhere between 0.4 and 1 volt. But they do have some devices that use something that they call their EPAD technology that uses floating gates to be able to program the threshold voltages precisely. So you can even go down to a threshold voltage of 0 volts if you want. The ones I'm showing here are pre-programmed at the factory but they do make ones that are user programmable. So you could put these in a circuit where you could at various times for whatever reason actually change the threshold voltage. They have this app note AN1108 that talks about different applications for that kind of programmability. So where can you buy these? Well, I've seen a few of them here and there at various vendors but the largest collection seems to be at DigiKey. So if you want, you can sing the Adafruit song. I made this little spreadsheet showing what's available at DigiKey and the prices of what you can get at DigiKey. Mm -hmm. Those are shown in dollars. And if you see 50 O, that means that it is available at DigiKey, but there's a minimum order of 50. So if there was a minimum order of 50, I didn't bother showing the price because I thought it would be misleading to compare the price per unit for 50 chips versus the price of just one chip. The prices are listed in parentheses, and what I'm doing here is I'm listing the surface mount device price first, followed by the dip package price. Usually the dip package is more expensive than the SMT package, but that's not always the case. So in this block here, I'm showing the dual chips, and in this block, I'm showing the quad chips. And within each block, I have the NFETs 
and the PFETs. So for the quads, here's the NFETs and the PFETs. Each row here corresponds to a different threshold voltage. And I should probably emphasize here that this is with the source tied to the bulk, going along with my rant in the previous video I did on MOSFETs. So for this particular chip, the 1121 and the 1123, those are programmable by the user. Whereas these particular ones here, so we have VGS equals 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.4, 3.3, that's pre-programmed by the factory. So if you don't want to pay the money for these fancy pre-programmed versions or these programmable version, you could use a standard version that doesn't use this fancy floating gate stuff to set the threshold voltage, in which case you have 0.7 nominal, and this will range from 0.4 to 1 for the NFETs. For the PFETs, it's slightly different. It gives a range of 0.4 to 1.2 volt. Now, notice I've labeled each column here with either high drain current or low drain current. That indicates the drain current at which these threshold voltages were measured. So for the low drain current, that corresponds to one microamp. And for the high drain current, oh, <laughs> let me change this to high. All right, there we go. For the high drain current, that's 10 microamp. Remember that the drain current isn't zero at the threshold voltage. The threshold voltage indicates the transition between the sub-threshold region, aka weak inversion, where we have an exponential characteristic, kind of like BJTs, and the above-threshold region, aka strong inversion, where you have the more commonly known square law. And really, if you want to model what's happening around the threshold voltage, then you really need to pull out the full EKV model. And I should mention, these slides are by Brad Bench at Olin College. And if you would like to learn more about the EKV model, I highly recommend checking out this lecture that Brad recorded. One last thing I should mention is that all of the chips I've talked about so far involve enhancement mode MOSFETs. But if depletion mode MOSFETs are your jam, they have some of those. Now, Depletion mode devices are only available in an in-channel style, and I was thinking it might be interesting to try to build an 1176-style compressor using some of these.